I mean, just for your knowledge, you know, there are hundreds of these videos that have been recorded that are on Facebook and YouTube. And, and uh, you know, just recently I recorded one in which I go over the entire exercise, the double breathing exercise. And if there's ever any confusion in your head about it, you go there because the way I described it is exactly the way Rudy described it to me. I don't think there was a one percent, maybe a one two percent change in there, but it's exactly what he told me is what I described in that video. So if you have any confusion and you want to go over the exercise, it's something I never really made public before. I was always afraid to do it because if people, you know, start, you know, learning about that and then not getting somebody to truly guide them through it. You know, uh, it could be a very unhealthy situation. So it's not just a matter of hearing it, memorizing it. It's a matter of learning how to do it consciously, correctly, being guided by someone, you know, in your life who has been over the, you know, been over the path and is willing to make that commitment. <clears throat> But it's there and all of you, you know, continue to come to classes on a pretty regular basis. <coughs> so if you ever need to refresh a course, it's right there. I think it's on YouTube, probably on both of them. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even, I never go to YouTube, Facebook, any, any of those places. But I have about 400 <laughs> videos there. <coughs> And one of them is a really thorough, clear, simple explanation of the double breathing exercise. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? <laughs> Stuart, an exercise you shared with us, which is really helpful to me, was imagining um, a lotus uh, where your hara is, and the lotus just keeps opening up. Um, and that one is really helpful. Can I ask you to repeat the one that is Rudy in my heart, Rudrananda in my mind? There was a third one. I forget how that goes. Rudy in my heart, Rudy in my mind. I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay, it was something that you'd shared a while ago, and there was a third component, and I forget um, how it went. I'd have to check my notes. Well, the, the, you know, please help me to surrender. Yes. You know, yes. Please help me to surrender, to grow spiritually, to actually, please help me to open to surrender, to grow spiritually. And one I would add to that is not only to grow spiritually, but to be one with God, higher energy, to become one with higher energy in the universe. That's a very basic kind of prayer or mantra that Rudy used to give every time he gave out the exercise. You know, it shows humility. It shows if it's done in a real way, there's humility, there's gratitude, there's, you know, there's not pretension and thinking you know about spiritual, but you're really asking for help. Even in the Bible, it say, ask and you will receive. You know, you're asking from your heart, from a deep state of gratitude and, you know, sense of humility in yourself to receive. The Shakti that's going to help you to become one with higher creative energy. Help me to open, to surrender, and to grow spiritually, and to be one with God. But the humility has to be there. There are a lot of people that do spiritual work, and there's so much pretension. They read a half a dozen books, and they know about chakras, and this and that and the other. But it doesn't come from a deep place, you understand? It comes from intellectual 
understanding. And, you know, this exercise, it has to come from the heart. It has to come from a need inside one, you know, to express gratitude to God, to receive the energy that you need to grow and to have a spiritual life. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? I have one, Stuart. Yes, Lynn. Oh, by the way, I love that painting you sent me. Really nice. Oh, thank you very much. It means a lot to hear you say that. No. Um, it was very significant to me. Um, so my question is related to the battle <laughs> um, as I'm going through a uh, spiritual death right now, um, not easy, that I've experienced like a sort of like a slideshow of my life appearing before me. And it's just like flashes of things that I, I can't even remember I experienced, but I feel them, I see them. Um, and I'm guessing that this is the opportunity where the Shakti is providing. Well, it's, you know, it's all being released, Lynn. Yeah. All of that stuff that you have repressed all your life is coming mm -hmm. up. It's being released. It's time to take it into the chakra system, you know, bring it into the chakra below the navel, turn it into chi and then bring it into the Kundalini energy and burn it up and get free of it. But all of those images you have buried inside you and they're coming up and you can truly get free of them. All the things that are keeping you from having a spiritual life, you can get free of. You know, look, in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, look, I'm not big on quoting Hindu philosophy, you know, but you know, it starts out when they talk about the battlefield of truth. And when I first read that, I said, here are these two families lined up on opposite sides of a battlefield, ready to kill each other. And they're talking about the battlefield of truth, you know, and initially you think who has more power, who has, you know, who, who is right, but that's not really the battlefield. The battlefield is what you are talking about. That struggle to overcome oneself and to get to a place where one is ready to see Krishna revealed to them, God revealed to them in the deepest possible way. You know, that is the real battlefield of truth. What goes on inside every single human being. And I think it's an extraordinary battlefield. It's a battlefield that we all have to participate with. And it's not has nothing to do with hurting somebody else and you know, like this crazy war that's going on in the Ukraine and nothing, you know, it's truly overcoming the dragons that live inside us that are keeping us from having a spiritual life. That's the real battlefield of truth. So what you're experiencing, I think, is really major and it's really going to take you to a very profound place inside yourself. You know, don't be afraid to confront that enemy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a, a bodhisattva in, in Tibetan Buddhism called Manjushri, and he has the sword of wisdom. And it's the sword that slays all of those creatures that come up when we are on the battlefield of truth. Yeah, it's a terrible, beautiful thing. Um, that's my experience. So um, thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, I, about three, two, three weeks ago, I bought a painting, a really very good painting. I first, they, they, they advertised that it's Chinese, but I know it's really Japanese. And it's probably from about the 17th century. And it's the Buddha in a state of Samadhi. And around him, I mean, there must be 50 different, it's like a Bruegel Kermesse, like 50 different 
you know, monks and <laughs> all kinds of loha, all these guys, and every one of them has a face. And, and then the Buddha is sitting there in complete stillness, lying there in complete stillness. You know, I mean, that is winning the battle inside yourself. You get to a place where there's that kind of stillness. There's that serenity, there's that inner peace. And it doesn't matter what's going on around you, that sustains itself. But you can never be afraid to confront that enemy because that is yourself. That's not, you know, Vladimir Putin trying to blow up the city you're living in, you know? <laughs> That's yourself. And that's like the reason. eye of the storm or eye of the hurricane. Yeah, it's, a, it's being a real spiritual warrior. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? You know, I feel so much love inside myself. I just feel it just flowing over, bursting out of my heart. I mean, you know, it took a long time to get here. And I remember when Rudy arrived at that place and he said, there's nothing in the, on the face of the earth that's gonna take this away from me. This state of love, the state of Ananda, the state of inner joy, quiet, serenity, doesn't matter what the hell's going on in the world, <laughs> you can keep yourself calm and quiet inside and full of a great deal of love. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hi, uh, yeah. wondering what part does our intuition play on this spiritual life? Well, Soren, when you really trust it, it's, it has a major role, a major role, because usually your intuition is right on. It's when you start thinking about it and analyzing it that you create a mess. But the initial inspiration to do things and to attempt things and to, it's, in my life, I discovered years ago, it's always right on. It, it, it has taught me so much about how to grow inside myself and how to trust that intuition, because I also discovered that intuition comes from God. It doesn't come from me sitting around and thinking about things and analyzing them, <laughs> making myself crazy. And by the time you're finished analyzing, you, you've drained all the juice out of the experience, you know? So intuition is a very big element in spiritual growth and in inner growth and in taking chances, not being afraid to live a little bit on the edge not being afraid to step into the unknown. It's a, a blessing. And when you begin to trust it, it will transform your life. Life suddenly becomes a really amazing adventure. You know, along with intuition, we need to have training. You understand? I mean, I go back to artists and musicians all the time. And 
you know, I mean, people like Bach and Mozart, Beethoven, Monteverdi, these great composers, you know, uh, Vivaldi, you know, 19th, 20th, so, you know, I mean, they had intuition. They were inspired by spirit, by Shakti, by higher energy. At the same time, they had a craft that enabled them to create this extraordinary music, these great works of art in the world. So it's up to us to be open to receive the energy, but then at the same time to be smart enough to build a system inside that is strong enough so that that energy, when it you know, goes into the world, it really creates an amazing life for us. So those two elements are very important, having inspiration, trusting inspiration, trusting, you know, uh, intuition, and then at the same time, having built a system inside that enables you to transform that Shakti into a spiritual life, into a creative life. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, we will have meditation on Sunday. Same time, same place, same places. <laughs> we'll have meditation. And thank you, and God bless you all. I mean, your presence, as I say all the time, you know, really demands of me to go so deep inside that all this stuff comes up. It allows me to tap my intuition and trust it 100%. Because if I start bullshitting people about spiritual work, you know, you get found out very quickly. And I don't like to bullshit really about anything, frankly, you know? But most importantly, about the things that I learned from Rudy, this great master that I had, and the things that I have to transmit to the world. So God bless you all. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Thank you, Stuart. Thank, you. Thank you very much.